Imagine having the power to create custom video styles for your projects, tailored exactly the way you want them. Today, I'll walk you through the complete process of training Hanyuan video LoRa's, covering not just one method, but two. Local training using your own hardware and cloud training for those without a high-end GPU. By the end, you'll not only know how to do it, but why each method has its advantages. Let's dive in. Hey creators, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Polly, and I break down complex AI workflows into simple step-by-step -step guides to empower creators like you. Today, we're taking on Hunyuan Video LoRa training, a cutting edge way to teach AI to generate videos in custom styles. Here's the plan for today's video. We'll start by setting up everything you need for local training using Windows and Linux subsystem. Next, we'll walk through cloud training using RumPod for those who prefer renting GPU power. And finally, I'll compare the results and share some advanced tips for optimization. This is an in-depth guide, so grab a notebook and get ready to follow along. Before we start, it's important to understand the requirements for training Hanyuan video LoRa's. They are very demanding. The hardware and system resources you'll need depend on what kind of data set you're using, images or videos, and whether you're training locally or in the cloud. Let's break it down training with image data sets. When training with images, the memory requirements are slightly lower because you're working with individual frames instead of continuous video streams. For image datasets, you can get by with a GPU with 60GB VRAM or more, a dedicated 32GB system RAM for processing. We'll use Windows Linux subsystem to do that. So, for example, if your computer has 64 GB of RAM, 32 GB has to be allocated exclusively to the Linux. Okay, so if you have 32 GB total RAM, WSL might only have access to a portion of that, which can cause crashes or slowdowns during training. Pro tip to avoid issues, always ensure you have more RAM than what is allocated for WSL, for example. If your OBU cell configuration uses 32 GB, ensure your system has at least 48 GB total RAM. Training with video datasets are much more demanding because they, they require higher resolution, frame continuity, and larger batch sizes to process effectively. For video datasets, you'll need a GPU with 48 GB VRAM or more, such as an RTX 4090 or a Wanderoj. On this guide, I used 80 GB VRAM 800 to train videos. Recommended total system RAM at least 48 GB or more, with 64 GB being ideal to ensure smooth performance. Local versus cloud training requirement. Local training great if you have powerful hardware, but you'll need to meet these demanding specs. Cloud training a good option for those without high-end GPUs. You can rent GPUs like the A100 with 80 GB VRAM, and system RAM limits won't be a problem since cloud services allocate sufficient resources on demand. Just an observation I want to clarify that I'm not sponsored by RunPod. They published a guide on how to train LoRa's on their platform, which I followed, and I decided to share my experience with you. Finally, if you plan to train video but don't have the required hardware, consider starting with image-based data sets to test if the script will run locally before upgrading your setup or moving to the cloud. Now that you understand the requirements, let's dive into the process of setting up everything locally using Windows subsystem for Linux a VUSL. Step one, install WSL. This allows you to run a Linux environment directly on your Windows machine. This is critical because this script uses a library called DeepSeed that doesn't work very well on Windows environment. Here's how to install WSL. Open PowerShell as an administrator. 
type the following command. This will install WSL2 along with Ubuntu default distro. Once installed, restart your PC, then launch the Ubuntu from PowerShell or command prompt. Update BUSL to the latest version. Common issue, older Windows versions. If the WSL install command doesn't work, it could be due to an outdated Windows version. Ensure you're on Windows 10 version or later. If not, update Windows first. Step two, install GPU drivers and QDA toolkit. You can follow this NVD, a guide to install the drivers, but it will lead to an incorrect version of the required one. For this tutorial, I recommend asking ChatGPT something like how to install QQDA toolkit 12.1 on OnBSL2, and you'll get the correct instructions. You can skip to step five because you already have installed Linux subsystem. Follow the fifth and sixth steps and verify the installation with the seventh step. Type this command to ensure CUDA is installed. It has to be the version 12.1 and there's another command here to check if your GPU was detected. In my case, you can see here RTX 4090. So we can go to the next step. We need to install Miniconda to create an environment to avoid conflicts with external libraries. To do that, copy this command here on Anaconda website. It will install Miniconda in your system. After installing, close and reopen your terminal application or refresh it by running the following command. And finally, to initialize Conda on all available shells, run the following command. Because I already installed Minicoda before, you will see an error on the screen saying that no such file or directory. Here, below on the terminal, I just tested Taconda environment to show you it's working. As you see, now let's clone the script on GitHub repository page. Type this command. And again, because I already cloned this repository, I'm getting the message that the folder already exists. According with the script guide, it recommends to recurse submodules. So type these two commands. Now let's create the condo environment. Type these two commands here and press Y for yes when asked. I already have a conda environment created, so I'm getting this message here. So, when you finish the installing process, you'll be able to activate the environment. Now, let's ensure that CUDA is also available inside our environment. To do that, simply copy this command here into your terminal. Now, before installing requirements, let's install PyTorch. I'll tell in a moment why. These two steps have the potential for the most issues. These are the versions that worked for me, but so just go ahead, copy and paste these commands in the terminal and wait until it finishes the installing process. Now you're gonna to have to install requirements. Text using this command, potential issue. When installing DeepSpeed or other similar Python packages using pip, you might encounter errors related to QDA compilation. These errors usually occur because the necessary TUDA development tools are not available on your system. However, since I'm aware of this issue, I've guided you to avoid the error. If you encounter any deep speed related errors, double check your NVCC CUDA installation to ensure everything is set up correctly. Accessing files in Windows to access your files from the Windows subsystem for Linux using Windows File Explorer. Navigate to the following directory, the Ubuntu. Folder name might vary depending on your Linux distribution. Be sure to replace your username with the username you set up during the WUSL installation process. This convenient setup allows you to seamlessly transfer images into your training folder and copy the finalized LoA files to ComfyUI. Download and organize models to set up your training environment. Follow these steps. If you already have the necessary files, 
you can copy them from Windows into the specified folders. Otherwise, proceed with the following commands. Navigate to the diffusion pipe directory. Create necessary directories. Download the Hunyuan video filers. Download the clip model. Download the large language model. These commands ensure that all required models are downloaded and organized into the appropriate folders, ready for use in your project. Training configuration. Adjust a file named Hunyuan video in the diffusion pipe examples directory. Below it is an example configuration file. Adjust the values according to your requirements. Dataset configuration. There is a second file named dataset in the diffusion pipe examples directory. Here's an example. These files serve as the blueprint for your training setup. Customize them based on your project requirements, such as dataset location, model paths, or training parameters. Preparing training data. Follow these steps to prepare your dataset for training. Create the dataset directory Run the following command to create the directory structure for your training data. Place training images or video samples in the directory. Lore, training requirements. Include 20, 50 diverse examples in the training folder. These samples should vary in pose, lighting, and composition for better generalization during training. An observation, just remember that if you're going to train LoRa using video, it uses a lot more memory. Optional prompt filers. You can create text files with descriptions or prompts for each image. Each text file must have the same name as its corresponding image file. These prompt files guide the training process by associating textual descriptions with images. Example directory structure your training data images folder should look like this. With this setup, you'll have a properly organized data set for training low A models. Be sure to verify that all image files and prompt files are correctly named and placed in the images folder. Training, train to start the training process. Use the following command. This command disables certain features that might cause issues in sp specific setups and uses deep speed for efficient multi GPU or single GPU training. Monitoring training, monitor GPU usage in Windows terminal. Use the following command to track GPU usage, updated every five seconds. Here we have the training session the script is loading the text encoder model, the LMM from the specified path. The model loading process might take some time, so I'll accelerate it slightly to ensure you can see the entire process. Now, the script is loading the clip model, and in here, the tokenizers. Now, the script will catch the metadata from each image on the dataset folder. This also will take a while. Okay, so after this, it will start the training and it will take a little bit to complete. Have you ever trained an AI model like this one? Is this too hard easy? Let me know in the comments. Let's keep the local training running. Now, let's look at cloud training. If your local hardware isn't up to par, renting a high end GPU from RumPod is a great option. Here's how to get started. Create a RumPod account, go to RumPod and sign up for an account. Choose your GPU instance. Select a GPU with at least HVV VRAM, like an A100. Set up your instance with using better Comfy UI template plate or your preferred one. I recommend starting with the better Comfy template as it allows us to easily test the model after training the lower A. Additionally, it provides access to VS Code, wonder enabling file transfer and running the training process without the risk of as a disconnected web terminal interrupting the run. To use VS Code, connect to port 7777, open the command palette and launch the terminal from there. You'll need to clone the repository. 
install the required libraries and download the models just as we did for local training. Make sure to install Miniconda to set up the environment and also install PyTorch with the recommended CUDA versions. Since this process closely mirrors the local setup, I won't go over it all again to the file paths. Otherwise, running the training uses the same command as before. Money saving tip always stop your instance when you're not actively training. This prevents unnecessary charges, training outputs, training results including checkpoints and models will be saved in the directory specified by the output directory parameter in your Hunyuan video file. Resuming from checkpoint, if your system crashes or you need to pause training, you can resume from the last checkpoint using the resuming from checkpoint flag tips configure the Hunyuan video config file to regularly save your checkpoint and epochs during training to minimize progress loss in case of interruptions. Be mindful that frequent checkpointing consumes significant storage space. Using the trained LoRa, locate the trained LoRa, navigate to the training output directory in Windows, open the latest epoch folder and locate the adapter, save tenses file. Integrating with Coffee UI Copy and Rename Laura Filer Rename Adapter. Save tensors to something descriptive, CG, Custom Laura. Save tensors and move it to the Laura's folder in your Coffee UI installation. Install Hunyuan Video Wrapper Node. Ensure you have the Hunyuan Video Wrapper Node installed. Get it from the GitHub repository. Load the LoRa in Comfy UI. Use the Hunyuan Video LoRa Select node to load your LoRa. Experiment with different Epoch files to identify the most suitable version for your dataset. By following these steps, you'll successfully train and deploy your custom LoRa model for use with Comfy UI. To summarize, local training is ideal if you have powerful hardware and want full control. Cloud training is a great option for those who need high end GPUs without the upfront cost. Now it's your turn. Which method are you planning to try first? Let me know in the comments below. If this guide helped, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more AI tutorials. I wish you all a happy new year for everyone. See you in the next video.